All right, what we have here is a Motorola HDTV um, satellite dish receiver from Star Choice. Yeah, that's where your card would go, but I guess that's missing on this model. It's been a while since I've had satellite. And by a while, I mean basically forever. Last night satellite was when Bell was around. Well, Bell is still around, but when before they had HDTV, before they even had flat screens, when the when a standard definition satellite receiver was oh broke the door. When a standard definition receiver was twice the size of this, and I guess there goes the door. I'll probably have to fix that later. So that's what it looks like with the door broken off, I guess. Even though I just picked it up like this and it broke off. I don't know, I guess it just clips on. And I'll put that over here. But, yeah, Motorola logo. This is before Motorola was bought out by whoever. Yeah, Motorola satellite receiver. Yeah. But, I think since I just kind of found this in the trash, we're going to autopsy it. And maybe even stuff the components of a computer in here. And on the back, there's just the power cord, a oh, phone line, DVI, oh, nice touch, USB, just uh, antenna in and TV out. Oh, there's a channel 3 and 4 selector, like a VCR. Come on, you. And there's composite video 1 and 2, so you can have it output into 2. And there's. I think that's component out. And there's optical audio, S video. There's a UHF antenna. That is some sort of sound thing. Digital sound, I think. There's the satellite dish input. And that door actually goes to nothing. If I can open that over there. Yeah, there's nothing in there. I don't know, that's I guess where you put the expansion cards for the machine. It's basically like a computer. Considering it has USB and DVI. You know that fancy jazz. Uh, which side is it on? Yeah, we'll get side there, side of the door. I want to see what's in there. Another expansion slot. Yeah. Uh, oh, don't want to drop the door inside of it. That would be not cool. Uh, Alright, so we're going to take this apart. That uses rivets or something. I don't know what the fuck those are. I guess I will have to... See what happens if I take pliers to it. I'll be right back after I get that cover off. Here's the motor roll all apart. So the screws had to be grinded off, which are done, which is done now. You can see it left some damage in the case, but I don't really care. It's like that everywhere. I don't think it left any damage in the back panel. Well, it did, but it's minimal. Anyway. Inside the Motorola computer, you, you can see the laptop IDE style hard drive connector, or even maybe even compact flash. I don't know, but it's a type of IDE with a nice Motorola runway kind of thing. There's one of these is a CPU, and one of them isn't. I'm going to take a guess and say this one's a CPU. I actually think this one might be the CPU. No, it might not be. It doesn't look like I want it to come off. Hmm. Nope, I guess not. But, yeah. It's probably a PowerPC platform. Anyway, there's four RAM chips. 
There's a Broadcom chipset there. This does not use cheap components. It even uses kind of name brand chaps. I've heard of that brand, I just can't pronounce the name of it. Um, standard CR2032 clock battery. This chipset here is made by Spartan. It's the X Link Spartan, I don't know. I want to get this off. Oh, there it goes. What this is is an NEC. Uh, I can't read that. Let me just take a picture of it. So I'll stop the video.